India's electoral calendar is more complex to the one we are familiar with in the US for at least three reasons. Firstly, uh, India's parliamentary system, uh, as opposed to the American presidential system, um, doesn't have fixed terms of office. Um, so there is a maximum term limit of five years and um, most governments, including the present one, are likely to uh, survive the full term. But um, if the Prime Minister chooses to, or if the opposition are able to successfully call a vote of no confidence, then an election can happen uh, basically at any time. And some governments in India have, have only survived for a few months. Um, the second reason uh, is that the scale of elections uh, means that they are actually spread out. They're not on a single day. Uh, they're often spread out over weeks, sometimes in months. So the Electoral Commission's team and security forces, if required, can ensure that voters in every district have a free and fair election. Thirdly, and most importantly, India is a multi-party system where instead of the two that we're familiar with in the US, uh, there are many different parties, both competing at a national and state and even local levels. Uh, and we looked at some of that last week in diversity. So let's take a look at the Indian electoral calendar in 2016 to begin unpicking some of India's electoral complexity. Uh, this year, the states of Assam in the northeast and West Bengal, also in the northeast, um, have been holding their state legislative elections uh, in April. Uh, Kerala, Podacherry, and Tamil Nadu uh, have done so in May. You even have elections at the village level, at the Gram Panchayat level. Uh, Bihar's Gram Panchayat uh, elections began in late April and uh, continued throughout the month of May. Uh, remember that India's constitution established as a new republic um, a parliament, as a parliamentary democracy as opposed to a presidential system. Even though it does have a president, uh, it's not an elected by the people president. They're, it's a, a nominated and, a, and appointed by um, the political parties. Um, accordingly, um, the timing of elections, uh, unlike the US, can be really unpredictable. Uh, in the US, we know that the next election for president will be held across the nation on November the 2nd, 2016. And we've known that for a very long time. Um, we'll also know that the president will be inaugurated on January the 20th, 2017, at noon. India's uh, electoral cycle is very different. When Prime Minister Modi's BJP-led uh, National Democratic Alliance uh, won the election in 2014, uh, in what was the largest election in human history in terms of votes cast. Uh, it didn't take place on a single fixed date. Uh, voting was phased between um, early April, I think the 7th of April, uh, to the 12th of May 2014. As I said, election terms are not fixed, but given that Prime Minister Modi uh, and the BJP won an absolute majority, uh, it's extremely likely that the current government will continue in office until 2019 five years after 2014 and the, the maximum term they can serve. From a national to state to village level, because the election cycles are not fixed, uh, they can happen at any time uh, and in any order. Uh, this results in a highly complex uh, calculus of electoral politics. When state and central governments are aligned, so for example it's the same party both in power in the centre as in a state, or when uh, uh, coalition allies or ideologically uh, similar, um, they will cooperate more. Um, they'll do more to help each other. Uh, but when you have uh, an opposition party in power at a state level uh, compared to the national level, um, that can often mean that central funds and various other decisions are made uh, not in the favour of the state that's in the control of, of opposing interests. Um, so there's a, another example of how the state and regional level can increase the complexity of politics, uh, livelihoods, government policy, doing business in, in India. Um, let's recap. Predicting the timing of elections at national and state and local levels is one factor adding to India's complexity. Um, but another is the sheer number of political uh, parties contesting these elections. Despite the founders' intentions, the United States has been a two-party system since its inception. While the names of the parties have changed over time, and independents or third-party candidates occasionally win a, a seat here or there, um, the US system really is based around two parties. 
The US follows the prediction of Duberger's law, a principle in political science which asserts that plurality rule elections with single member districts favours uh, a two party system. India defies this expectation in remarkable fashion. Currently, India has as many as uh, six political parties, um, such as the BJP and Congress, recognised as national parties by the Election Commission. Uh, in addition to these, India is home to dozens and dozens of state parties, um, which are powerful forces in one particular state or region, both in terms of their state elections, but also in terms of the seats um, that they can win in the national elections. Um, so, for example, in West Bengal, All India Trinamool Congress is very strong. Uh, the Samajwadi Party in Uttar Pradesh is very strong and, and currently ruling the state. Um, the previous government in Uttar Pradesh was the Bahajan Samaj Party. Uh, the Shiv Sena, a very strong party in Maharashtra. AIA DMK in Tamil Nadu. The Janta Dal United in Bihar. And the Akali Dal in Punjab, to, to name a few of them. Moreover, India's political parties um, have a huge range in political ideology, from communist to conservative. But often the left-right political spectrum we are accustomed to in the West another sort of Western categories, um, fails to apply adequately to capture the range of the Indian political sphere. So other parties focus on representing a, a particular identity group, uh, for example, or a, a particular caste. Um, some parties even have rejected India's democratic framework altogether. Uh, the Communist Party India Maoist, for example, is a, a a party with, with Naxalite uh, origins that rejects constitutional democracy, wants to overthrow uh, violently the government. Uh, it's active in remote areas of central India, especially the heavily forested and mineral rich uh, states of Jharkhand, uh, uh, Chhattisgarh, uh, western parts of Odisha, and, and the northern parts of Andhra Pradesh. Um, the, the Naxalite movement, incidentally, a word I just mentioned, uh, gets its name from a village, Naxalbari, in West Bengal, uh, which was the centre of left-wing, uh, poor, kind of a peasant protest against landlords in the late 1960s. Uh, the previous Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh, has described the, the Naxalites as the greatest threat to India's internal security. Recent analysis by the journalist Rupa Subramania uh, shows that the left-wing Maoists and Naxalites have actually been responsible for more terror incidents than, than any other community in India. Uh, Indian politics are constantly shifting. Uh, new parties frequently form. Uh, and in the case of the Ama Admi Party, uh, sometimes even win. Uh, launched at the end of 2012 uh, out of an anti-corruption campaign, the Aam Admi Party won 67 of the 70 seats in uh, Delhi's Legislative Assembly elections in 2015. Um, the other three went to the ruling BJP party. The BJP, uh, being the, the party that uh, less than a year earlier had swept a victory in the general election and become the first party to win a majority since 1984. As evidence of the shifting nature of Indian politics, the Election Commission uh, publishes a table of uh, available party symbols, uh, including ones like an air conditioner, a trumpet and, and a watermelon. Um, parties need to have clear symbols uh, to ensure that illiterate people can understand, can recognise uh, who they want to vote for. Um, here are some of the Indian political parties and their symbols. Uh, the BJP has a lotus. Uh, the Congress has a hand. The Samajwadi Party, a bicycle, uh, the BSP, an elephant, and the Aam Admi Party, a broom. While each of India's 2016 state elections has strong local dynamics, they also have implications for national politics and are considered indicators for contending parties' chances in the next general election. The cast of characters you need to learn about to be able to follow Indian politics uh, is much larger than any other country. When you consider that you have dozens of major parties, some national, some regional, uh, from across the political spectrum, some joining together in coalitions, some breaking and, and leaving coalitions, sometimes having coalitions just for a particular campaign in a state level uh, and then uh, disbanding that coalition when it comes to national politics, uh, when you consider all of the um, uh, election cycle dynamics in terms of the different uh, moments when you can have an election and the impact that can have uh, a state and a national level, um, you get an impression of the fact that 
Indian politics really is the most complex in the world. Uh, compare that with the two-party system and fixed term limits of the United States, for example. And that's not to say that US politics isn't complicated, um, but it's to say that Indian politics, uh, for the reasons that we've shared, uh, is certainly even more complex. Uh, for observers, this makes it fascinating to follow. And given the increasing importance of India internationally, uh, for foreign businesses and for governments, uh, it's critical to appreciate the complexity of Indian politics.